Welcome back, friends, to Reverb Music Festival 2024, day two. I am here with the band that opened it all. Welcome to the show, Amber Pacific. What's up? Hey, thanks for having <laughs> us. You guys came from Seattle. All the way from Seattle. Well, actually, yeah, Seattle, Nashville, and Wisconsin. You guys are all spread out now. For we, this event, yes, we were all spread out. But oh. I, I live in Nashville. I'm originally from Wisconsin, which is a random fact. I'm Dango the drummer. Um, and the rest of the dudes all live in Seattle. So I moved out there for a while, eight years when we were touring heavily. But I live in Nashville now. All the other dudes are out there. Except our bassist, Brad, was out here because his wife's from Wisconsin. So he was kind of on vacation this week anyways. Dope. So random kind of timing for all this. What part of Wisconsin are you from? I grew up in Madison area, but my parents oh, okay. live in Eau Claire the big now. city. Yeah, but I went to high school <laughs> in Madison. <laughs> oh, okay. How long have your parents lived in Eau Claire? Maybe 15 years. So you've been here quite a few times over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We used to come through here on our on our early touring days, and like we'd stay at his parents' place every time we played around here. And oh, so do you remember any of those shows? Like what? Where you even performed in Eau Claire? I know we played at a couple of churches here and there, and like early on, I feel like wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe there was some place There's in like lacrosse that was upstairs where you had to climb oh, all these stairs sick. the loft or something i can't remember i remember sure. that somewhere in wisconsin where it was like the you carried all your gear steep. no sure. yeah no elevators and yeah, that yeah. was in our early touring days but the touring days now are drastically different because people live in different areas what does music look like for you guys right now have you been touring a lot is it like little short stints are you in the middle of a big one um, right now we're in full on like studio mode recording our new record. Yeah, fifth so, one or something? Fifth full length. Oh, wow. And um, we've been doing fly out shows here and there yeah. uh, with the red jumpsuit apparatus and we've got a couple coming up with Mest and so we're just, we're kind of spreading it out. Um, Randy's the homie by the way. Yeah. We did like a, so before last year, because they were there. Um, me and him did a FaceTime interview from my cabin and then did like a full length one, oh, nice. uh, right, literally like right here last year. So yeah. shout out to those guys. But anyways, continue your story. Yeah. So, um, just sprinkling those in throughout, but really we've been focusing on our new album and just working in the studio in Nashville, um, with Sean Rogers producing it. And, um, is there a name or date you can put out there for when that's coming out? We actually, we haven't landed on a name for the album yet. We're still okay. tossing around some ideas with that. But um, release-wise, we're thinking it'll probably be early next year. But okay. singles will start coming out pretty soon. So, How many how many songs do you think will end up being on it? Um, I think right now probably between 10 to 11. And uh, how many singles will come out before the album? How much of a tease is there going to be? We've debated that a lot. We're saying yeah. at least two, but we don't want to release a ton if we're doing a whole record. Sure. I think we're going to have 12 songs on the record, but either way, it's going to be in that kind of ballpark range, so we don't want to give away too many. We'd rather just put it all out and go here. What's the strategy for doing that? Because a lot of times these days, people are really pushing management and everything to like have something new every month. New song, yeah. new song, new song. We've watched a lot of different models. We've talked about that um, with a, you know several people, and it's hard to say because there's no exact format that works anymore. And you watch Post Malone do it one way, and you watch Morgan Wallen do it, and then you watch Nickelback, and there's different formats based on the genre. Plus, when an artist is huge, it's like, well, of course, whatever they did works. Blink-182 put out a few songs, but it's really hard to say when you're not at that level what's going to connect sure. because you want to hit new fans, and you want the people to remember you're still around. For us, it's our 20th year as a band, we first signed a deal in 2004, so we just want to remind people we're around. We've got new music. Also, if you come see us, we're going to play the old songs that you would know. And if you've never heard of us, that's totally fine, because obviously that's a lot of people in an experience like this today. But we just hope you go, oh, they've got a whole catalog. We've got to check this band out. We didn't know they existed. So that's part of the strategy as well, is just letting people know we got new music. You're going to like it, even if you've never heard of us, but also we got all this other stuff. What's different about the new music? What's different about this coming album? Um, there's a couple things. When Normally in the past, we'd go into the studio with wow. the bare minimum of songs that we needed. So <laughs> if we were planning on doing 10, we'd have like nine and a half. Yeah. And on this time around, for some reason or another, we went in there with like 24 songs, something like that. Whoa. It was a lot. Um, was that because each guy was kind of doing a bunch of things on their own and everyone just came up over prepared? I don't know, man. I, uh, Will's the primary writer. He writes pretty much all the songs and then we come in and make changes and flesh them oh, out. Okay. But he just had tons of material that he'd been it, kind of working on the last year or two. Yeah, I was, I was hitting some old ideas and then 
I wrote an acoustic song and it like that song sprouted the writing spree so to speak and yeah. it's probably two songs a day it was just coming out I was sending these guys like voice notes every single day of like new stuff and I've never done that before so sure. it was interesting in the sense that like we've never had to filter through songs to pick which ones are going to make it and not make it because we've always just come in with like what we had <laughs> right what's the cohesive thing that brings this album together is there like kind of a story that's pushing throughout is there like some different not necessarily instrument but different sound that kind of ties this one to make it unique I think yeah I mean Don can speak on this a little bit more but um, this this record we have we have brought in um, session players to help us with certain ideas and so we've got um, a friend of ours named Baggio who's out in the Netherlands that has been oh, wow. jumping on and playing um, the majority of the guitars on this record based off of like concepts and ideas that we've laid down as rough tracks and stuff and Dango's been in there doing his thing and so the yeah the sounds we're getting is definitely different from what we would do in the past um, but we wanted to have a different approach with it because we wanted it to be fresh and new still within the world of Amber Pacific but it's gonna I think it's gonna be cool it's gonna huh. appease the old fans and hopefully reach some new ones too how is that going to translate to performing it live if it's uh session uh artists that are on the track yeah yeah it's all stuff that we'll obviously have to run through as a band and figure out what we want to play and these days bands are doing that so many different ways so we're going to have to be creative about how we approach that and attack that but i think what'll probably end up happening um is we'll we'll bring in a that probably one of our old guitar players to play a lot of the lead stuff that we were playing on these new albums, these new songs, and um, make it work that way. But yeah. Also, the new record, we just, because it's been 10 years since our last record, we it's just, we want something that sounds modern. The production's changed so much, in rock especially. Punk, metal, all these bands, that what's possible now recording is so much different than it used to be, and what's possible people recording at home can make bigger sounding records than you could make 20 years ago. So there's so much available. We wanted a record that sounds modern. So I live in Nashville. I'm a session guy in Nashville, and I tour with a lot of people. So this guy, Sean, that I work with a lot, I just kept saying, hey, he's a big pop punk fan. He works a little bit with Simple Plan, a little bit with Good Charlotte. He gets our sound. He's followed us a long time. And I've done a lot of country records with this guy. And so I just thought, this would be a great opportunity to meld his style of producing. So when I pitched that to the guys, we just really worked on, is this a good fit? They flew down to meet with him, Matt and Will. So there's three of us there going, okay, he's the main songwriter. We've got our singer. I'm the drummer on this, which is a big part of our, all three of this part of the Amber Pacific sound. And so we went into this record. We just said, let's make it the best we can. Even if it's not everything we've done in the past, Let's trust Sean's ideas as a producer. Let's trust all of us and anybody else we bring in. So if there's some extra players or not, we just wanted to go, how can we make the best record? We'll figure out the live part later. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're not going to, you know, come out sounding like Marilyn Manson. It's still going to sound like us. So it's not <laughs> yeah. like going to be a crazy departure. It's just, let's make it modern. Let's make it a little more pop, a little more polished sounding, a little less um, even a little less warp Tour. It still sounds like a warp Tour band, but it sounds like in 2024, like the record is just going to be slamming as far as sonically. I think is going to hit a lot of fans who go, oh, I don't even like pop punk necessarily, but you guys, I like this thing. That's what we're hoping for. How are you going to do that? Because marketing 10 years ago, I mean, it, it changes like all the time, right? Does, like TikTok yeah. wasn't here 10 years ago. Yeah. What's the marketing strategy to get this to people? Because you're in a really oversaturated <laughs> right. space. It's like, it's yeah. hard to get anyone to hear anything once, let alone like if they even do come across it, you got three seconds to cut them. Like, otherwise they're going to swipe past. Even if you did put it on socials, like how are you going to get it to people? So true. I think, I think that these songs and I don't, I mean, I don't really, this is just me looking at it. This is my opinion. I don't care what anyone else is thinking or saying, but like, I think these songs are probably some of the best songs that we've done and the best ideas that we've had. And I feel like they're, the goal has always been from the start when we're doing records, like not to have filler songs or songs that you just fast forward. Right. Right. And this record, I feel like we captured that with all the songs that are on there right now and we have a couple more that we're you know tossing around for ideas but i think because they're 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 each individually so good they i mean they could almost all be like a single a month type of approach if you wanted to yeah um so i'm really proud of them we're all really proud of them and i think that they all have their own place to be listened to and i don't think that people are going to just breeze over them that's the hope right. and just from our our personal perspective like i think we're all really proud of it like working with Sean was awesome and he's got great ideas and it's fresh because 
The first three albums we did, we did with the same producer, Martin Fevier, who did a great job and captured what we were going for in that moment and that time. Uh, we did the turn, kind of pivoted, worked with Mike from MXPX on that to, to try something different, and now we're working with Sean. So I think every time you work with a new person, you're going to get a different, like, approach to the record and different sound and different ideas and so i don't know the way that this one's coming together just we're really proud of all the songs that are out there right now sure and like i'm 43 and if you think we've been in this band 20 years like all the guys now are married with kids and different seasons of life so you're coming all your perspectives different how you play how you write how you sing and we're still the same band but it's like we're trying to be this as as this season of life is going to sound different than it did and the songs we would have put out when we were 24, 25, 26, because just who we are. Of course, they're going to be genuine. Exactly, yeah, and right? not going to be exactly the same. And our influences, even though we still like all those same bands, all those bands have progressed and put out new records. And, you know, sure. if you listen to Green Day Dookie versus American Idiot versus their new stuff, you hear a progression of they've just gotten older, this is how the music matures, but you still sound like the band. So that's part of it. And the marketing thing, we don't have a great answer, but we are... Um, we're working with other people, I'll basically say. Our last one was totally self-released, and we can't really say anything at this point yet, but we are going to be working with other people on this record, so it will kind of go back to the old way of how we were doing things before with some kind of label help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you have to. It's just one of those things where, again, even if you make something that's awesome, people's attention spans are so short that it's really hard to get it in front of them. Absolutely. Like, as an example with, like, the show, I know that 98% of people that will see something from this will see short-form content version. Right? Like, there'll be however many people will listen to the radio version. There'll be however many people on YouTube that watch the full Mm -hmm. interview. And Mm -hmm. then however many that are on Spotify and Apple. And, like, that's great. And that number's awesome. And I'm happy with where that's at. But it does not compare to the YouTube shorts and the TikToks and all that other, you know, whatever. And you got to cast that net. And that person will see that one little thing. And that's what will drive them to Mm -hmm. eventually come back to it. And it's the same way when you go to something like a festival. You expose yourself to all these new fans, right? Like, they're finally like, oh, who's this band? That's a perfect opportunity for them to be able to discover somebody. Is that part of why you guys try intentionally to still perform as much as possible? Oh, always. Yeah, man. Like, we are always looking for opportunities to to play in front of new people because there's so many people that don't know who we are. And right. we understand that. We don't take that for granted. That the, the people that do come, it's really special to us that we have people singing our songs. And, like, that's always been cool. But we always, you know, we want those opportunities to, to continue to continue continue to get out in front of new faces new new ears there were a lot of people singing along today it was there were i mean that that stuff like for uh, that has never been anything that we've ever been like oh yeah cool like they're here to see like we always are like oh my god this is amazing yeah every single time and if they even know one song or two or i mean there was more singing today than i expected for us having to play first and i was super thankful because if you get a yellow card fan or story of the year fan or hawthorne fan that remember us remember one song like that means the world because that that just leads to other stuff that leads to oh i should i forgot about them i should go check them out on spotify i should see what they're up to oh they're doing a new record i didn't know that and that's where the socials really come in so i'm hoping we can up our social media game that's hard because we've been out of the loop and we toured before social media all our warp tour years if we'd had it back then we would have killed it because we were a band that was super good with hanging all day we would sell over 100 cds a day on warp tour because we spent the whole day talking to people we even had cd players we listened to our song we were selling <laughs> yeah. to people who hadn't heard of us sure. and then they'd come see us play and we hung out and walked around the whole day for 12 hours and we would do that the whole summer and that's kind of people knew our band for that so yeah if we could get that drive again with social media and the time with our careers and families to go all right let's when we're going to invest we're going to make it the best we can that's part of the plan how do you execute that i don't know we haven't done it yet so We'll yeah. see next year when we talk to you. We'll let you know how it's going. Dude, for real. I mean, it's something that just is constantly evolving. And I don't like how much time I have to spend sitting there creating short form content. But unfortunately, I just know like that's currently where it's at. In a year, it may be totally different. If you could pick any band in the world to go on a 90 day tour with, and you have to be away from your families for a little bit to do this tour, but any band at all that you have not toured with, which band would you choose and why? Mm. There's a lot of bands out there that we are big fans of. Um, the two obvious, in my opinion, are the two biggest in the genre that we've actually never played with either is Blink-182 or Green Day because they always are going to be massive in their draw. That would be cool. So career-wise, getting in front of the most people, 
that would be my vote for this band. I think right now, um, for a lot of us, uh, I think a band like Simple Plan or someone like that, it's, it's always been a band that we, I mean, they're one of those bands that got us into the genre, at least me as a songwriter. No pads. I played that record all the time as a kid over the summer, driving a Mazda Miata around. <laughs> and um, that got me into it, man. And so those guys, um, Chuck and the whole band, like they've been supporters of us for a long time. And we've always, uh, we just never had the opportunity to play together. And for me, that's always been, I tell Chuck that all the time. It's like, man, I, we got to play some shows, you know? So like if we could do a big tour, that's a band that I would love to go out with for sure. One day soon. Okay. So I ask this question every time I interv- interview people, if they have time anyways. When you do something that you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences that are not usually financially driven, but they're the reason that it's worth doing, even though you're not necessarily making as much money as you should. Yeah. Can you share one experience that comes to mind? Um, I you don't go know. First. Don, you've, you go first. You've had a lot of cool experiences with people. Um, yeah, so even when the band slowed down, I moved back to Nashville. So I've been playing professionally the entire 20 years, even when the band took breaks. So I play for a lot of different artists. The last 10 years, I've been playing for Scott Stapp, who's a singer of Creed. Well, Creed just started the reunion, so the solo project's not going. But playing with him, I've got to see a lot of the world that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, Europe, South America, South Africa, and probably one of the coolest experiences I can remember was my first show with him. We flew to South Africa, and we took this lion safari, and we got to pet lions and see all these exotic animals. And I just remember sitting on stage and it was touching a, like a reservation or something. And so I could see in just a sea of people, I look behind me and there's like giraffes and hippos and all this stuff you wouldn't see in America unless you're at a zoo, just walking around like close to the stage. And it was one of those surreal, like, how did I get here? But it was through playing music and getting to do this as a career. It was just one of those crazy experiences for me. Yeah. I- I can't pinpoint one single moment or person, but like just the, and this is probably not even answering your question, but like just the, the fans that we have, the people that we interact with on a day-to-day basis, like through our social media or when we were touring full time, like the stories that we got every single day from people, like that's really the reason why we're doing it. It's a motivating factor behind continuing to write. And there was a period of time there where I wasn't writing anything at all. Cause it just like was not inspired whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. But then you pick up a couple comments here and there. And like just last night, this is just an example. Um, I had a guy come up and tell me that it, it was funny because we were talking to the crowd and saying like, you know, yeah, I, I dropped out of college just to, to be in Amber Pacific and didn't know that it was going to turn into what it was, what it has turned into. And he said that when we released the turn, it motivated him to actually go back into school and get his degree. And it was like, what a crazy like roundabout thing, you know, like I left school and college to do something that I believed in and it inspired him to go back into something that I actually ended up quitting. And this is like this weird circle moment, but it was just a story that I haven't heard before. And it's like, wow, the music reaches people and touches people in certain ways. And um, the impact that we've always had with that has been like something that's just always amazed me. So for me, it's it's cliche to say, but like it's it's like the fans and stuff that drive and um, keep me, you know, engaged in what we're doing and wanting to continue to do it. But dude, that's the beautiful part about the internet at this point, right? Is you don't it you're reaching able to reach people all over the world that you didn't necessarily ever perform in front of, that yeah. you never handed a CD to or anything. They just came across you from some social media thing, from some Spotify thing, from, you know, whatever, and you can have that kind of impact on somebody's life and have no idea. I I think it's it's thinking about like I wrote I wrote some of those early songs like in my parents basement just me in this room at like two in the morning and then we get these Spotify reports that say your song was heard in like the Philippines or like these random countries around the world and it's just like how does that even happen and that is mind-blowing every single time I see it and the thing I really want to say about Will that's cool is you know we've all all been family guys through this band and having families and still continuing to do records but Will's written all these songs for five albums now will is a full-time pilot besides having a family and kids so the the experiences he went through to to be flying as a profession and all the places i'm surprised you didn't even list that it's like all the places he's been around the world and in the meantime he's still been writing these songs for the band and we're still getting together and doing shows so i mean he's a humble guy and left that out but i'd say that's a pretty significant part of your journey as well yeah yes yeah, that i'm proud of you for a whole nother <laughs> life that i have and we but but that's for everybody everybody's got families we all have jobs outside of music and 
it's balancing it all that's been really the challenge right and i think we're figuring it out and hopefully like as as we go on and we release this record we're going to be able to play more shows and more festivals things like that and get back out in front of people because like that that is what it's all about is playing in front of the crowds and even if it's like the crowd that we had today we still get a, a, a like incredible thrill out of that and we don't care if it's like five people as long as it's five people like care and they're having fun like we'll play wherever whenever absolutely yeah yeah well dude thank you so much for coming on the show for sure um thank you for joining us for this episode of the passion pod we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did we'll see you soon <laughs>